Xavier Center and our favorite Matt Stainbrook, who joins us now. He has uh, been working out for some NBA teams, including the Lakers and the Clippers. He's basically on tour. He's like you two. He's on tour. And uh, give us an idea. You go into the Lakers. Tell us what happens once you get to the door. Yeah, so uh, you show up. They uh, First off, they fly you out there, put you in a nice hotel, and then um, you get there, they, they give you some gear to wear, and they, they basically start off the day with some measurables, height, weight, um, wingspan, stuff like that, um, some of the stuff you'd be used to. Uh, and then you, you get on the court, and then they do some agility stuff. They have these really fancy motion sensors they use to you know sort of track your time. Um, and then you have an on-court workout. Uh, for me, it was just one other player, so a lot of times it's, it's more than one. Um, but, you know, it's usually a, a two- or three-hour process, and then you're, you're out the door onto the next team. Who was the player you played against? Josh Smith from Georgetown. So, uh, if you can imagine me, plus 50 pounds, that's what I was going up against. <laughs> uh, who was working you out? Um, it was one of their assistant coaches named Billy. Yeah. And uh, how would you uh, – better experience with the Lakers or Clippers? Um, I think they were both equally as good. Um, I think they are a little bit different in that um, the Lakers were more – um, I think focus maybe on the agility portion. So they do a lot of testing with, you know, hey, how fast can you get from the three-point line to the free throw line, um, vertical, how, how quick can you get off the ground, those kind of measurements, where the Clippers uh, didn't do so much of that, where they more did on-court competing stuff. So um, they're both different, but both really good. How important is personality with this, Matt, that you're not going to be a starter, but to be able to make a team and be somebody who's going to, work hard in practice, be a good guy, coachable, help out, those kind of things? I think you hit it right in the head. It's one of those things where I think a lot of times it can, you know, sometimes make or break a player. Um, you know, if you're a guy that can provide a good team dynamic, you know, be a good person in the locker room, you know, help your teammates out whenever you can and, and do the things that, you know, maybe everyone doesn't want to do, um, you can, you know, create some space between you and another player that they're considering. So, um, especially for my position, I think uh, the best I could do is just, you know, be a good teammate and, and work my hardest. If I said you could be last man on the bench NBA or you could go to Spain or Italy and average 15 a night? I would say that I'd want to be the last man on the NBA. Um, I think that's, you know, the ultimate goal for pretty much any player. And uh, although I wouldn't be getting a lot of playing time, I think, you know, that culture and you know, being able to work towards, you know, maybe getting a minute here or there or something like that. You know, I like working towards something. I think I, I'm a competitor, and I, I like that the most. He's Matt Stainbrook. Uh, he worked out for the Suns, Lakers, Clippers. Work out for the Warriors tomorrow. So wait, you're working out for the Warriors after tonight's game? Yep, yeah. Are you going to the game? Uh, no, I wish. Unfortunately, I don't have as, as much clout as you. I'm not, I'm not big time like you, Dan. Well, but why don't you just say, look, I'll work out for you, but I need I need a ticket for tonight's game. <laughs> you know, I don't think I'm in the position oh, to you're not. a demand. <laughs> <laughs> well, how about you just show up and stay in the building overnight? You know what? That's a pretty good idea. You know, uh, maybe I'll have to sneak in. I know they do have some workouts today, so maybe I could uh, sneak in with those guys. Did you did your uh, Uber job come up in the interview? Do they have fun with sort of your your quirkiness? Oh yeah, I think that's going to follow me for the rest of my life. There's two things I'm worried about following me the rest of my life. <laughs> it's, it's Uber and letting letting Nick Lovin score on me because oh. that that seems to never never get dropped. I was I was in the airport and leaving Boston <laughs> last week. Someone came up to me and said, I can't believe you let Nick Lovin score on you, and walked away. And I was like, but, 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 wait, wait. oh, and they were gone. And so now I'm, you know, having dreams and nightmares that I'm going to be on my deathbed saying, I let him score, I let him score. What, um, is there a chance this comes up during an interview where somebody says, look, what, Matt, I don't know, uh, you got a lot of, lot of intangibles we like, but you let Nick Lovin score on you. I'm going to say, you know, that was a minor lapse um, in, my, in my character, in my career. Um, I can assure you that that will never happen again, and I will do my best to redeem myself. All you need to do is say, look, it's all about content, and I did it for content. You know, if I blocked his shot, it, it never comes up again. So you let McLovin be Frank Kaminsky for a day. Exactly. I want to be a good guy. I don't want people to, you know, see me as a villain. I want, you know, I want the good guy role. Have you heard from European teams? 
Um, not really. So right now it, I, I signed with um, a guy named Adam Goddess and Frank Catapano. And so what it is is we're, we're going the NBA route first. You know, you go gung-ho towards that. And then um, basically at the, the middle of July, end of July, you'll know uh, whether you're going to have a shot with the NBA team or if not. And at that point, then you start looking overseas and, and sort of making those moves. You get to keep the gear from the teams that work out? You know what? It, it, it depends team by team. Um, so Lakers and Clippers, they let you keep everything. Uh, the Suns let you keep part of the gear, but they wanted their jersey back. So um, I guess they're collecting the jerseys. Wait, these are just practice jerseys, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, maybe they repurpose them. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. That's lame. Are you going to attend the draft? Um, no, I will watch it, um, but I don't have any uh, plans to get drafted at this point. No, 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 no. You I... go full uniform and you go to the draft. Oh, I, I don't know if they'd allow that. Um, well, you can go in as a fan. I will get oh, you true. in. I'll get you into the draft if you wear your Xavier uniform and you wear the goggles. And uh, I mean, I might even let McLovin go in with you. Really? But he has to wear the same thing he wore when we played. Yes. He'll wear a Golden State Warriors jersey, but here's the thing. You're sending a message to say to all of these teams, you may not call my name, but I'm here. I'm ready ready to play. Yes. Put me in, coach. I'm ready to play. Slap the floor. I mean, you got to – we got to be creative here, Matt. Marketing. That's that's true. That's very true. I'm selling Um, the Stainbrook brand is what I'm doing here. It's a good brand to sell. What, McLovin? What's the problem? He's kind of like Ralph Branca, who gave up the shot heard around the world. If he appears with me in public, like Ralph Branca and Bobby Thompson or yeah. Al Downing and Hank, it's good for your brand. Like he's he's a you know noble in defeat. Mm. Well, no, he's not. He's not a defeatist. He doesn't admit defeat, but he does have a sense of humor. That's what he's showing there. But I, Matt, I think you show up. Yeah, I think it'd be great. Full uniform, and uh, somebody's going to look at you differently. Well, that might have to be something I do. All right, well, good luck, uh, more importantly, with the Warriors. And uh, we'll check in with you in a couple of weeks there, see how you're doing. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate it. Good talking to you guys. Thanks for having me on. And that's Matt Stainbrook, former Xavier Center. And McLovin, a little drop step, and you took him down.